<laughs> the raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off. He's gonna steal the Eye. But how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. But you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. Why do you need the gun? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. Nor do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, 
a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance, somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watch the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> That would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're guarding something. Oh really? And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? You don't want to arouse attention. Evident. But why not? It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You're in my country, and I've been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do, whether you like it or not. Hmm, clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zalna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind.
morning, I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich with me anyway. so excited this morning that I couldn't eat anything. Needless to say, the second I got into train, I was famished. Fortunately, I bought an apple. I was so excited this fortunately. apple core in the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I'd prefer not to have to carry them all day. The napkin came with the croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. Would you be so kind as to close the window? I don't want to sit in the draft. Oh, pardon me. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door and in front of it, the engine. The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. The train covers a distance of more than 3,000 kilometers. It stops at a dozen places. In many cities, they entertain the travelers with local specialities and culture and adventure, especially in southeastern Europe. The Vicarage in the Mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. The violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. Hello. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at the reception in the Egyptian Museum now. I'm 
I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is that cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. The violinist is a good-looking fellow. And he's traveled, but one can only... Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh! Pardon me! No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr... Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. If you work in the British Museum, then you must have experienced the burglary firsthand. No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present. And especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a robbery in his own museum. You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. I don't believe that... It's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. Perhaps a thoughtful conductor noticed that Professor Lucien wasn't in his compartment and locked it. I 
don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partou is my favorite character. Then, I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so... Eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? The little boy, Matt, he's your son? Oh, yes. Has he done something? No, no. I've already met him. 
Clever little fellow. We always call him Professor because he's so precocious. If only someone could just drive the mischief out of him. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. An extraordinary woman. Talented, intellectual, extremely rich, and the most successful writer of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion, and that she's rather unhappy. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Scotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Hmm, maybe if I just suck it. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. The pad on which the steward writes orders, empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard to open packages. These days nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup and small bags. I couldn't believe it. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. Hmm. Where could he be? A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last ten years. Stewart probably has the key, but where is he? This is the steward's own little kingdom, but as long as he's not around, he won't be upset if I take a look. the acquaintance of Dr. Gebhardt on the platform in Zurich. Ah, Mr. Zellner. Right, right. How can I help you? Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. Tell me, 
Did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No. Just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Legrand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. I do indeed have a theory, but what's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular moves. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. May I borrow your newspaper? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Danke schön. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Locked. Bang! Bang! Uh -huh. Don't move! Matt, have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too, once you flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, tunnels... No, I'll stay down here. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Hello? Wow. Don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. This is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? 
An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo. <laughs> Someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner. Be my eyes and ears on the train, and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. What do you know of this raven's heir? He tried to blow me up! Rob, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or... Several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zell? Yes? Don't bother us, unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exact a moment. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of the Grand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. This is the steward's own little kingdom, but alone. Hmm. When I scratch the pencils lead with the scissors, I get fine graphite powder. I won't get a Nobel Prize for the idea, but graphite powder will bring out fingerprints at a pinch. didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... he's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable.
little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then close the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen. When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform. James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. But couldn't we perhaps... <sighs> All right. First, the purse. I... <sighs> I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. doesn't really seem to be content. Hello, Matt. Oh, come on. Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this, either. I'll leave it there. I'll pick it up before I get off. Should... Should I ask for an autograph? That would be quite unprofessional. But on the other hand... Lady Westmacott. Yes. I uh, was wondering if you might sign your book, Constable Zellner. If it isn't too much of an inconvenience. Of course it's an inconvenience, but only a small one. You're welcome. Thank you so very much. Let's see if there's any news. Blah, 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 blah. Eye of the Sphinx. 
One of two priceless jewels, extraordinary pure ruby, 2000 BC, etc., etc. Old news. And here, shocking burglary. Professional thieves surprised by museum guard Charles Langley and Constable Robert Oliver of Scotland Yard. Explosion. Constable Robert Oliver from Scotland Yard. He was there when the first eye was stolen. Now he's guarding the second one. Luna's Drops. The calming herbal liqueur for women. A glass a day. It relaxes the nerves and maintains domestic tranquility. Luna's Drops. If you don't want to bother your husband. <laughs> Hmm, a story about the upcoming Oscars and Cleopatra's chances of winning. An incredible feat. They build the largest movie set of all time in Rome. And because of the main actress's many illnesses, several changes of director and months of delays, cost shot to over $40 million. The most expensive movie ever made. A record never to be broken. John Surtees won the Formula One World Championship for the first time on Saturday. He also won the World Championship in motorcycle racing from 1956 to 1960, making him the only man in motorsports to win World Championships in both motorcycle and Formula One events. Hmm, not really my cup of tea. Too loud, too fast, too much exhaust. Toothpicks are packed into small paper wrappers. Nothing unusual. Would you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Friends again? Mm -hmm. All right then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the lady's house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide and no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him. And hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then mom fought with him. And he left. I was seven. Oh. 
And uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no. We'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> Good at copying things to be an actor. That. that wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Mm -hmm. That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich put it in his violin case. Really? Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him? Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Mm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So longer. -er.